Hey, it's Nick here. How's it going? So today I'm going to be doing another stone lithograph. I'm going to do the key layer in a traditional stone lithograph style. And then I'm going to use Sharpies to create my color layers. And so I'm going to take this photo I've got here and I'm going to take some red iron oxide paper and transfer it over to the stone. Uh, this is a photo of my parents' backyard uh, during, you know, last fall when I visited. It was really overgrown with lots of these plants and they really like to farm their vegetables and their fruits and stuff like that. And I thought it was a really nice juxtaposition to the winter that we're kind of sitting in right now. And so I can have this little taste of fall by doing this lithograph. And so once the transfer is done, I'm just going to paint some gum arabic onto the borders so I can get some nice crisp clean edges. And once that's done, it's onto the drawing. And so this is also a little bit of a field run for my new Letho pencils. I've been working on a lot of different recipes. Uh, they've gone through some testing, but I haven't really kind of done a full drawing with them yet. And so giving those a little try out here. And so I had a lot of fun with this project. You know, this first initial uh, drawing only took me about a day. And it's kind of really fun to just kind of start a project and see some sort of, you know, progress or fruits of your labor after just a day. So I guess I'll just talk about what happened to me this past two weeks. So last week, uh, when I first started this drawing, Taco Bell had just re-released those Taco Bell chicken wings. And I didn't get to try them the last time that they were out because they sold out really fast. Uh, probably not for the better, but uh, I, I heard many terrible things about them. And so I figured I'd have to try and see it for myself. So I went out to Taco Bell and I got the wings and I got to say they were better than I was expecting. Uh, it's probably definitely like rat meat or something. Uh, it was very suspicious, but it was crispy, flavorful. It was good, but I want, I would say it's not as good as any wings you would get from like a dedicated wing place, but it's definitely better than what I expected from Taco Bell. I mean, I, if you put them in front of me, I'd probably eat them again. Uh, actually, no, I, I take that back because I do remember they did not like, uh, you know, exiting the body. Uh, they, they really put up a fight, uh, even though they weren't spicy. Uh, I'm pretty sure it was just like whatever dust that they put on their Doritos Locos tacos. Uh, but man, did that thing fight on its way out. Yeah. And so... After I finished the first half of this print, I printed the key layer, let it dry. Uh, I went down to Oklahoma to go visit my cousins, and that was a fun trip. I got to see all the fun, cool Oklahoma stuff, like uh, the red, the red clay dirt. You know, that was that was pretty cool. Uh, I also got to eat some nice, uh, greasy pizza. It was really what I was craving. Uh, I think it was called Empire Slice House or something like that. Uh, and then I went to Boomtown Creamery, got some cool ice cream. It was a good time overall. And then I got to come back up here, finish off this print, which is really fun. Uh, ended up taking me like another week to finish it up. Uh, but, you know, I think that's pretty fast compared to having to grain stones in between each time. I only had to grain a stone once for this piece, so it was pretty good. Well, let's see, three three more minutes. What else can I talk about? I'm kind of kind of out. Of, I'm kind of out of uh, things to talk about for now. Uh, so I guess we can just uh, sit and watch me draw for a little bit. Uh, I've got a Pepsi, uh, not Pepsi Mango, which is my favorite soda of the time right now, but uh, just a normal Pepsi because they didn't have it at our local grocery store, Price Shoppers. So. I guess we can just sit here and uh, drink our sodas together. I remember while I was drawing this. I had to really resist the urge to just kind of like lean and hunch over the stone because that's probably what I would normally do. This stone's only about six inches by eight inches, so I would consider that a relatively smaller scale. 
uh, drawing. I'm really used to just kind of hunching over, uh, wearing my jeweler's goggles, and just kind of staring at all the tiny little detail uh, on the piece that I'm working on, kind of carrying over from my wood engraving and kind of lino cut days. Uh, but you know, I found that it's very hard to record while you're doing that, so I'm trying my best to just kind of step up from afar, focus my eyeballs, and just kind of get the drawing done. You know, I'm finding that drinking a carbonated drink while you're video editing and voiceovering over, uh, it's not a good thing. I'm not going to make you all listen to the burp, but, uh, yeah, it's kind of a uh, counterproductive having to pause and then, uh, edit it out. Oh yeah. Another cool thing that I found out, uh, this week, uh, so I was going to Walmart to go get myself some acetone. And then I found that they were out of acetone from the hardware section, which I usually buy. And then, uh, so I went over to the kind of like the health and beauty section where they have the nail polish removers. And I found that they have acetone over there, uh, hundred percent pure for only $3 for half of quart, 16 ounces, I think that is. And so that's like. I could get 32 ounces of the nail polish remover acetone for like $6, where it would cost me like $11 to get the quart of normal hardware acetone. And so that was pretty nifty. Uh, although I do find that it dries way too fast, uh, almost unusably fast. Uh, but I made it work. It's cheaper. Uh, maybe I'll figure out a way to dilute it or stop it from drying so fast. But now that I'm done with the drawing, I'm going to take it over to the litho processing area and I'm going to hit this with the rosin and then the talc. And then we're, I'm going to hit this one with an overall 12 drop etch and then buff it down to a thin film of gum arabic. I'm going to let this sit overnight and then we're going to start our second etch. So I'm going to wash out the old image with some mineral spirits and then rub in a little bit of asphaltum and then we're going to wipe off the old gum layer and then kind of ink it up and I'm going to ink this up a little bit darker than when I first drew it just because I kind of want myself to have a little bit more rich blacks and kind of a fuller value scale uh, than I did when I was drawing it and so I kind of like where it is right now and so I'm going to let it dry and then again rosin talc and then I'm going to hit this again with the 12 overall etch again. And then I'm going to buff it down and then I'm going to give it about two hours to rest this time. And so while that's resting, I'm going to go ahead and get my paper ready. Uh, this time I'm going to print with some Hosho. I'm just going to tear this into fourths and then I'm going to stretch it beforehand. Uh, always remember to pre-stretch your paper if you're going to do multiple litho layers. And I like to stretch my paper on an etching press. I feel like I can kind of get a little bit more pressure, a little bit more of that stretching action. And it's a lot faster to deal with than uh, litho presses, at least my litho press. And then a little bit of a tape reinforcement on the back and then punch some holes. And then back over to the press, I'm just going to rub out the old ink with some mineral spirits, rub in some fresh asphaltum, and then finally I can start wetting the stone and start printing. And man, is this new brayer worth all that effort I went through. I can ink over my stone, no lap marks, there's three passes, recharge, three more passes, and then it's ready to print. And now I'd say this image is a little bit on the lighter side, but that's okay because I'm going to add color and I want to make sure that the color has some room for it to pull its own weight. And so now that's done, I'm going to wet wash all of this ink out of my stone. And then I'm going to hit my stone with a really hot 25 drop etch to kind of kill all of my old image uh, so it doesn't reappear in the later layers. And then I'm going to wash all of that gum arabic off so the stone is open again, paint myself some new borders, and then I'm going to start drawing with a sharpie. So the sharpie doesn't really work the same way that traditional kind of grease drawing lithography works, uh, but it does bond to the stone very well and it repels water. And so just by that and its nature in itself, I can get it to kind of pick up ink and then print that. And so with a fresh Sharpie, I find I can get away with two layers of stacking Sharpie 
uh, as long as I can see that I get this really nice kind of glossy sheen to my Sharpie, then I usually find that that's good enough. And then a pure layer of gum to help protect my white areas until I'm ready to print, uh, which I'll probably do the next following day. And then I just have to wash off the gum Arabic and I'm ready to print the next layer. And so I print the color layers right over top the black layer. Uh, my inks has got about like 95% transparent base, so it's super transparent. And that really kind of allows it to kind of sit over top. Now once I'm done printing the green layer, I'm going to wet wash the old ink out with the mineral spirits. And then I'm going to seal up the stone with some used gum Arabic. And then I'm going to use acetone to kind of wash out all of the Sharpie. And the used gum Arabic is just going to protect the rest of the stone from getting stained. And then after a quick rinse to get off that gum Arabic, we're ready to start drawing again. And the nice thing about this is that old stain is going to kind of help me get to know, you know where my old last layer was. And I can kind of plan accordingly to that. And so this layer is going to be the red of the deck and kind of the reddishness of the tiles. And I'm just going to do a split fountain for the two colors. Kind of do like more earthy, tiley color for the bottom and a bit more reddish, orangey-ish color for the deck. And then at this point, when I printed it, I was kind of starting to hate it. Because I feel like, man, I should have just left it at green and black and white. But I told myself, you know, most of these projects, almost every print project, it's just going to look terrible until you hit the finished product. And so I decided to keep on going with color. And so for the next layer, I just want to do a slight tint to the house and a little bit of a cloud. And so these areas weren't going to be such a bright white. And so I transparentized a little bit of a yellow ochre with like 99% transparent base. And here you can see that it gives me just ever so slight kind of tinge to the house. And so this is probably the most subtle of the layers. Uh, you probably won't even be able to notice uh, too much of a difference. Although up close and personal, it adds just a little bit of kind of like a nice balancing. And about halfway through this project, I got tired of scattering these prints over every table surface that I could find. And so I kind of came up with this little drying rack solution. And so really it's just a piece of cardboard that I've folded in half. And then I've cut these little slits into them with a kitchen knife. And so they're kind of wedged. They're going to be a little bit tighter at the top and a little bit more open at the bottom. And that kind of gives me an adjustable sort of pressure that holds on to them. So the higher I slide it up, the more clamping force it has. So for the final layer, I'm just going to do a little bit around here for the gray of the concrete. And then I'm going to add a little bit of texture and tint to the tiles down here. And then I'm going to add a little bit up top and do some blue with another split fountain. And that'll give me my sky color. And I really think that this is the layer that kind of pulls it all together, uh, just kind of adding that extra bit of like depth and fullness to the image. I really like that little bit of gray in the bottom tiles really makes it look not flat. And that little bit of blue in the sky kind of gives me that nice crisp line across the top that I really enjoy. Now I'm going to trim off the excess border. I'm going to do about an inch on the bottom. And then I'm going to do about three quarters of an inch on the sides. And there you have it. A nice little fall time homage. Really missing fall right now. I really don't like this cold. Uh, hopefully I'll get to do another one of these if it starts snowing. Uh, we haven't had a lot of snow this year. So uh, I don't know if I'm going to get around to doing a snowy version of this. But if you like what I did or you learned something new, thanks for watching. Uh, I'll see you next week.